piece of equipment you're going to be using is this laser, which this is the side the laser comes out, and this is the side that makes the connection. This is the sensor, this is the sensor hole, and if you look close, you should be able to see kind of um, in there a shiny square, that's your main sensor, and then this lens actually will go in front, and you should be able to see the laser light coming through and focusing on there. This is your mirror. Please keep the bag over the mirror when it's not in use since we need to keep that surface shiny, uh, free from dust and fingerprints. When you go to set up the mirror, what you need to do is extend these legs. You want to have it pretty high up. You undo the latch and then pull the legs down. Now, before you actually tilt it up, please do close this down so that the legs will stay locked. To open it up and then have it stay, you actually need to tighten this down and you want to make sure that this is just isn't going to close on you. So first you open it and then you tighten this. Once you have the mirror set up, it should look like this. Note that there is something hanging from it. That's to help you find its location. Another thing to note is that there's two screws on the back. These serve to actually tilt the angle and so that changes the angle of the mirror. Now they're really small changes, but that's what you want. My advice is for them to start kind of like this in the middle. So you have a little bit of space so you can move them both in and out. Uh, this screw doesn't do anything. You won't be messing with that. So these are going to change the tilt of the mirror. And so in general, you probably want to keep everything else here tight and use this for small adjustments. So your uh, laser's way down there. And initially, you'll get the angle coming down to the mirror. And then you'll adjust the angle of the mirror so it bounces back. This is the function generation you're going to be using. It's not the one you normally use because you need to be up at 2,000 kilohertz or 2 megahertz, and the standard ones in the lab can't actually do that. So you have different uh, frequencies up here. Right now this is on the 5M, so this is actually 2,000 kilohertz or a little higher. We can you know, use the knobs as normal, the coarse and the fine. Now these, you don't need to worry about duty cycle or CMOS level, but you're going to need to use DC offset and input level. In order to use the DC offset, you need to have this button pushed in. You don't want to have that button pushed in. Now on the bottom, we have output. Now right now, the output is going to the back of the laser. It's also going to my function gener uh, sorry, my oscilloscope. Now, right now, I'm looking at a sine wave, and I've centered my vertical line um, right here, my triggers there. So you can see that my sine wave is actually going from ground up to 10 volts, 5 volts right there, so it's centered around 5, and that's what you want. Now the problem is the laser isn't going to work if you have this input sent as well. So before you use the laser, you need to unplug the scope and actually put it in the TTL CMOS. I haven't adjusted any of the settings, but I have now moved this cable. So when I come back over here, I see this kind of square wave looking thing. That's okay. That's what you're going to see on your scope. But the other end of the laser is still on that output. So we turn on the laser. So there's a switcher on the back. And you don't want to actually, you know, stare into it. So you use a white piece of paper and you see a dot. So my laser is on. Now that dot's actually oscillating, but you can't tell because it's oscillating 2,000, uh, sorry, 2 million times a second. Now that mirror is really, really far away, and this initial alignment's going to be hard. So I recommend that you actually start with the mirror fairly close to the laser. You have to start by getting your alignment right. The best way to do that is with your laser on, use a piece of paper to find where the beam is going. And right now, the beam is going, right now, the beam is going too low. So we need to drop the mirror height down so that it lines up with this. Now, I really recommend to not uh, have someone back there unless you're blocking the beam. So you could have one person blocking the beam with a piece of paper and the other person behind, or turn off the laser. One or the other don't have someone working right in the beam. So my laser's on. And when I track the red dot now, I see that it actually comes really right onto the mirror. What I've done is I've actually taken one of the legs completely in so that only one extension is open. And then I've used this riser uh, to lift it up vertically. 
So now what's happening is it was going to be hitting the mirror and actually bouncing back. So what you now want to do is try to find where it's bouncing. Now what I can see is it's actually bouncing to right here. And what we need to actually have it do is bounce through that lens and back onto the sensor. Now one way is to keep adjusting our little laser here, but it's actually going to be easier to adjust the mirror. Again, this is going to be easiest with a few people where one person is tracing the reflection with a piece of paper and the other person is adjusting it onto the sensor. When you have your alignment correct, you're going to see the red dot going through the lens. If I use my piece of paper and don't block my original one, I see my red dots there. It's going through my lens and then it's actually on my sensor. Once it's on your sensor, you want to look for that signal on your oscilloscope. To look at your signal, you want to turn on your sensor, which is a switch here. The green light on the front will come on for you to know it's on. Again, you want to look for that dot on the sensor. Now, I've already adjusted this. Um, keep in mind that you want to have a BNC cable going from your sensor to one of your channels. Right now, I'm actually triggering on channel one, which was the uh, TTL output of my function generator. So this square signal is my function generator. The sinusoidal signal is from my laser. Now, you might not see it look that pretty. Interestingly, if I turn up my laser signal, it's actually going to become really flat. So that's not very good. So if you turn down the laser signal, you're actually going to see a better sinusoidal pattern. But keep in mind, that's for the mirror right there. As the mirror gets farther away, you're possibly going to want to turn up the signal so that um, you have uh, more laser intensity. But that's a little hard to know. So what you want to do is use the cursors. Remember, you push the cursor button to turn them on. And I'm going to use my delta time. Now you want to start by putting one of the cursors, and you want to be careful about what one you're using, you want to put it, for instance, at a trough. Now one option is to keep one of your cursors at a fixed location, like this edge here where I have that solid one, and keep it at this edge of my square wave. So that's my channel one square wave, and I'm putting it right on the edge there, because that shouldn't be changing at any point. And then what I'm doing is looking at this dash line more or less right on the next trough. And the reason I'm not using this peak is that it's going to be moving and I want to make sure that I can get that motion okay. Then I come up and look at this delta time, which right now says 269 nanoseconds. So keep in mind this is really fast. Right now we're on a 100 nanosecond scale. So I see where my trough is. The idea is that I then move my mirror, which means that it takes longer for that laser pulse to get back, and then I would actually see a shift in my trough. What I would do is write down my new time, which would maybe look like uh, 275 nanoseconds maybe. Now keep in mind that it's going to be hard to figure out exactly where that trough is, so you want to think about making an uncertainty estimate. For instance, having different members of uh, your group come and actually try to see where that bottom of the peak is. For instance, I think I still am at the bottom of the peak and now it's 274 nanoseconds. So really I have an uncertainty of a couple of nanoseconds on this measurement.